now we have to build the switch air too. So here is the PCB and uh, they said here this we have to split to the two. Yeah, I think it's going well. Okay. Uh, okay, I think it's it's really top uh, quality and uh, it, this is absolutely FR4 or something high quality PCB. Install the R5 and the ceramic capacitor C3, C4, C5. I have here this uh, LCR meter, yeah, just to check the capacitors and soon I will replace the input to the locker one. So this is what I'm using for SMD applications and I have another one with absolutely gorgeous gold uh, connectors. We will check uh, the capacitors with this tool. Yeah. 470 pico, okay. So it's 100 nano, yeah. So 100 nano. Yeah, let's call it 47 puff. Wow, this is really precise, yeah. So it has to be 470 nano and this is 464 nano. Beautiful El Cheapo 2 euro <laughs> PCB holder. <laughs> Oh, how I hate it. Unbelievable how I hate this one. It's really a cheapo. 470 p pico, which is the C5, C7, C8. Okay, so it's good also for C8. Let's put it here. Yeah, it's almost one micro, couple of nano differences. So this is the one micro 50 volt, which is here. This is the C3. Okay, 470 pico again, 470 pico, this is the C8, so it's 2.2 K, let's write on it. This is what means the 1% of uh, tolerance, yeah? So it must be 270 and look, 269 and a half, only half. Uh, ohm differences. Ooh, very nice metallic high precision resistors. Yeah, by the way, guys, if you want to do a really good job on uh, <laughs> parting <laughs> of your DIY <laughs> work, <laughs> just measure everything before, yeah? <laughs> so don't do like me now. Uh, in this case, if you get a part in a bags, it can be really confused because you see, eh? so which one is what, which one? Uh, most of the case, of course, I'm using my uh, parts, which is in a really organized boxes. So every box, when I just open it, I know exactly what kind of uh, value I, I have inside. So, but this one is a total different story. We installed uh, the R5 and the C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8. The 290 Celsius is not enough because this PCB, it's a really tough PCB. Let's say like this, because of the thermal coupling uh, for the driver chip, so, Definitely, I have to go up to 320 even, but no, it's a, uh, okay, I think uh, on 317, I'm okay. Uh, I cut the legs. Uh, by the way, this is always how I'm doing, so when I finish the soldering with few parts, I always cut down the legs because you can imagine uh, if you have here, I don't know, 100, legs and you do uh, and you want to do a uh, soldering also on the bottom side so yeah. add uh, air one air four air six and air eight uh, and one uh, installed vertically maybe i will pick up one of my tweezer <laughs> i think okay so this is the air one uh, next one is the air four which is 270 uh, ohm I saw it. I saw it somewhere. Let me do here some kind of organization. Yeah? I think it's a really nice uh, catch. Oh, look at these uh, resistors. 
269.99999. I'm sure it's 99999. So it's 270. So I just want to show you guys uh, the really the, the interesting parts of this uh, PCB building. For example, this transformer, the controller IC, because all the rest is just capacitors and resistors, blah, 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 blah. I think this part is interesting. Uh, so we have to uh, make uh, some kind of uh, noise uh, protection, noise isolation, switching noise isolation on this uh, transformer. And uh, if you ask me, it will be not easy, yeah? Because we have to add uh, a solder also on the top. So definitely it will be it will be interesting. Wow, oh, what a beautiful piece! I really, uh, uh, my, my heart is just breaking. No, to cover this beauty, put it here. So we just see the C, uh, almost. I see the C O, and uh, let's wrap it over. It's kind of dangerous solution because I don't like this metal is running so close to the wires of the transformer so because of the edges can be really sharp of this stripe so it can cause damage on the wire here on the transformer and I hope it did indeed Okay, so now we have to solder this one. I hope I have enough thermal capacity in this uh, small tip uh, to do this job. If not, then we will replace the tip with uh, this one, which is much more heavier, of course. But uh, I hope we have enough. Ah, <laughs> look this. Look at this. Uh, this tool is unbelievable. It's held when a thermal capacity, even if this is small, uh, to, to do this job. So this is what I mean if uh, your soldering iron is really professional. Look how much thermal capacity I have. Even I can do with that uh, glut work, yeah? <laughs> Big chunk of metal. With a big chunk of copper and this small tip can do the job. I'm telling you guys, there is some kind of magic inside here. Uh, I will do a video about this. So, thank you very much, Weller. Where is the dot? You see this? And this is a really important part. And here, nothing. Okay, so now I have a dot. Definitely, guys, I'm suggesting to you to put uh, the transformer first because then if you install these diodes and this uh, capacitor, see, it will be not easy to reach the legs of the transformer. But uh, if you have, let's say, normal soldering iron, not uh, this high ends what I have, for example. You see, so here is the dot and this we have to put here. Let's do on an EV block way. <laughs> By the way, this is not the EV block way. This is a really good way. Because if you just solder one leg, let's say on a corner, then your part is fixed. Yeah, but you can do a small adjustment. Here, for example, you can see, I think I am a bit offset, but like this way, now I'm secured. Okay. Two corner fixed. So this one and this one. So now the part is not moving at all. So now we can start the soldering, not from the not from the first one, but from the last one. And uh, in that way, 
you can do the SOP packages, the very tiny, tiny SMD packages with hand uh, if you don't have uh, uh, this oven solution or this infrared uh, solution. On this way you can, you can do a really decent uh, soldering job on even on SM. T or I don't remember. I get so confused with the SMD world because there is so much different kind of packages. I'm and I'm really not understand the industry why they are running the so the wires and the the distances on the normal PCB world is is imperial but the SMD parts are metric and uh, and they're using also some kind of really weird uh, new coding system for the packages I think even they cannot understand <laughs> what uh, kind of uh, names they created yeah I think uh, the transformer soldering is it okay Let's jump to the next, which is um, a switching controller with this kind of package. Uh, we have other kind of problem. This kind of problem is the really huge thermal capacity of this part. Lift up the pin 4 and the pin 6, counting from the left. I think it's a really important step yeah i don't understand why i have to do this so why they not uh, produce here a, a small pad which is going to nowhere why i have to sacrifice uh, this uh, i see i really don't understand so here we have to do some kind of tricky and the tricky is to apply flux Flux, flux, flux. Now I already adjusted the position of uh, this integrated circuit uh, on a way like uh, make sure the, the middle of the legs is meeting with the middle of the pads. So if now I'm turning, maybe you can see it from the top, but we have a really, really tiny bit of distances between the legs and this is what I'm talking about this new crazy SMD, SMT, SMMT world uh, these uh, gaps are I think this is only a joke if you ask me uh, and definitely not really not uh, like it at all so I don't know when we will arrive to the point on the DIY electronic industry when we cannot do any more anything at home because it will need uh, even electron microscope to, to repair or, or build something. So you know what, let me change now the, the tip. So I don't know what you guys can see, but this is what I can do now absolutely closed system yeah so this system alone can work no problem at all with the uh, uh, tip changing on the fly there is a few other uh, soldering iron when you take out the tip the tip is contain itself some kind of sensor technology or uh, this magnet or whatever and then you just blow up uh, your uh, soldering iron in this case not uh, okay, uh, look how quick is. That's it. I think we didn't wait for uh, five seconds or something like this. Okay, now I just finished uh, the soldering of this end of the regulator. And uh, now I just make it a bit uh, nicer. Let's say like this, like a TIG welding. This kind of finish, I really like it. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I don't think so we have any kind of problem just maybe this end of uh, the legs I see here's some kind of weird artifact between the legs yeah yeah I have a small problem 
what I easily can solve it with this tool. Okay. So now, let me check it. Okay, I think uh, it's okay. So let me change back the, the tip to the small one. So one second, two second, three second, four second, and the total cold tip is already on a working temperature. This tool is just amazing. Let's cut the four and the six and uh, let's cut uh, all. <laughs> ah, maybe you now it looks uh, weird and ugly on a camera, but this is only the flux. Don't worry guys, so everything is, is really nice. Of course, later on I will do uh, flux cleaning. Eight piece of three pin socket. Next one is the 14 step, which is on the radial inductors L2, L3. Take care not touching the connecting pins with your iron. Ah, really? So why are you telling me to install this one first and then the parts inside? <clears throat> 22 micro, it's fit. Okay. Then push it in. Okay. So C1, C2, C9, C13 and C14. So let me check uh, the... Uh, this one, yeah. <laughs> to build the switch here too. Simply just omit the C6, the C9, and the C14, and the R6, and the L1, and the D1. Ah, they suggest you to push these capacitors absolutely to the bottom of the PCB because these ones will define the height of the PCB. So if you do some shitty work like this, for example, okay, then you cannot put the, the, the cover on the top of it, yeah? What we will do again, just solder one leg, just a tiny bit, then we can push it uh, absolutely up, and then we can start to do a real soldering. So... By the way, if you want to get a fire in your home, just install one electrolytic capacitor in reverse and you're done. So, guys, always do a double check on the polarity because these things, when they get reverse polarity, And don't forget, this will happen in your studio. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so it's not a joke, guys. So always, if, if you are buying um, capacitors from eBay or whatever, don't go to cheap and don't go to super cheap and don't go to no name. Choose a real brand, yeah? Nichicon and Panasonic and stuff like this. So let me, let me check it again, make sure we did a good work. Here is the positive, positive, and so all the negative is looking to this uh, direction, so we are good. And again, double check, positive, negative, going like this, and that's it. And uh, if you're not sure, be sure. <laughs> Here is the photographed printed version for you from the sun sculpture. I think these guys are really, really great on the documentation. There is few parts what I'm feeling like, eh, eh, eh. so why, why it's uh, not like uh, arranged to, to two uh, column. Let's say this column called it uh, 
SwitchR2 version and this column call it SwitchR3 and everything which is common just write it here in a common but please guys uh, sort it out somehow because this is uh, it's will not mistakes yeah because the parts are missing but uh, it's take uh, the time from me to to find a part and not find a part so it's inside in a version 2 or it's not inside in a version 2 no guys please do something otherwise this documentation is just so gorgeous with these photos and with these uh, notes uh, and warnings split the first uh, 40 pins header into the one row of 24 pins and one row of 13 pins what Double check your count before you cutting. You know what? Um, I just drop it here like this so and then put this one to here and we are done. Brilliant design. I like it. I really like it. Oh yeah. How I can split 40 by 24 and get 13. Now within the language of linear algebra and Hilbert space, we have these sort, this sort of notation, these sorts of representations for what these states really are as they exist in the vector space, or in the Hilbert space. Uh, what can we do with these states? Well, okay, you know what? Just cut it here. I get confused here a bit so 40 minus 24 it's not 13 yeah <laughs> i am so stupid i forgot uh, these seven pins <laughs> which is described here in the uh, 12 uh, point so they said this must be yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm stupid. They said this must be installed before the row of pins. Oh, catch it, come on. Okay. Now we have to do this uh, top part. Uh, series of soldering. For that I have a trick. And this trick is to use the the desoldering tool on a really interesting way make sure i never press this button yeah because this one has a hole on the middle you can see and then if i push this one to here it will make absolutely perfect soldering on a leg it just look like uh, somebody did in a factory some robot Ta -da! We finished with the switcher. Huh? <laughs> now we have only one step. So let me connect uh, the inputs, which is uh, the ground is came here, the positive came here, and we have to measure here something something. So it's meaning this pin will be the ground and this has to be positive 19 volt and this has to be negative 19 volt okay it's uh, drawing 0, 0. 0.0. nothing nothing <laughs> amp at the moment so let's check uh, so the negative is minus 20 and a positive is a positive 19 999999 something okay so it's minus 21 on one side so we have uh, some kind of issue here with the balance so let's uh, check the semantic for a minute what i don't get it because this this uh, line here is do a shortcut to here. No, it's not make sense. So the ground is connected to the minus rail. So what? A, let me repair, yeah, the the semantic. Yeah, guys, it will be a bit ugly, 
because of the corrections, but you will understand. This is how I think it's be done. So the feedback lag is only connected to the positive rail. So if we have here some kind of differences, so this voltage controller, switcher, controller, whatever chip cannot measure the negative rail. So he just can measure the positive rail, and this is what is going to the feedback. And um, the other end, so how it's closed loop, because every loop has to be closed, yeah? So the other end, it's here in the middle, and this is connected to the ground. I'm not fully understand why we have here a voltage differences. So for that, I have to measure the output of the transformer on an AC side. So for that I need a oscilloscope and um, the best point where I can measure it is between the ground and between the here the cathode of the diode and here the anode of the diode, which is the D8 and the D9. Let's check uh, positive rail, 19.21, negative rail, minus 21. Mm. So we finish with this uh, power block or switcher and um, I'm quite happy with the results. I just have these uh, really small voltage differences, but I think it came from the uh, problem which is really commonly known on a power supply units, if you don't apply load on the uh, output, eh, it can be, it can be, it can be differences between the uh, mm, normalized setup voltage and between the real life. So without load, eh, you have differences. And I just have one work uh, to do with that, uh, to clean the residue from the, uh, the flux and from the soldering, and then this part is done. I hope you guys enjoyed, see you tomorrow.